everybody think of the children. <laughs> hey there, book people. Welcome to Book Vlogging with Jan. I'm Jan, and you might have noticed today, I'm not alone. I'm happy to have with me today, Helen. Helen is an intrepid bookseller from our Book Kids staff. About a month ago, Helen approached me with a request to take a look at a new category she created in the Kids Reference Database, children's books that pass the Bechdel test, uh, and maybe add to it. And I presented her with a counter offer. Come on to my vlog and talk about them. So here we are. So Helen, what the F is the Bechdel test? The rules of the Bechdel test are simple. So simple. Number one, the story in question must have two, two named female characters. Number two, they must have a conversation. And number three, it can't be about a boy. That's it. So what's the point? Well, the Bechdel test was developed by the comic book writer, Alison Bechdel, who noticed a severe underrepresentation of women in media. Now, of course, there are nuances to the Bechdel test. We don't expect girls to never have conversations about boys. It just can't be the only thing that they talk about. The test doesn't measure romantic interest at all. It ensures that the reasons a girl is included in the story are for reasons other than the benefit of the male characters. So why test children's and teens books for representation? Well, the Bechdel test is a great exercise that we can all use to be aware of the people around us. It teaches us to think more critically. Being aware of how people are represented in children's books can lead to children being more aware of how people are treated around them. Critical thinkers develop more empathy at higher rates than non-critical thinkers. So we asked a few of our kids staff to pick the books that they think pass the Bechdel test and then some. So here they are, Book People's Book Kids staff picks for books that pass the Bechdel test. We asked longtime kids bookseller Merrily whether A Bargain for Francis by Russell Hoban passes the Bechdel test, and she replied, oh yeah, Francis and Thelma are in frenemy territory, and every time Thelma comes up with a new mischief, Francis always gets the worst end of it. But when Thelma tricks Francis one time too many, Francis decides she's gonna teach Thelma a lesson. Marilee's favorite parts of these books are all of the little songs that Frances comes up with, and she particularly loves the jump rope song at the end of this one, where Frances sings, Careful once, careful twice, being careful isn't nice, being friends is better. This book passes the Bechdel test because the girls learn to set their boundaries on their own terms, and they learn to be better friends, and they're also very inclusive of Frances' little sister Gloria. Just like with picture books and early readers, we know that boy-girl relationships are not a priority for first chapter books and middle grade books. And again, they're not a priority for the test either. But at this age, girl stories do tend to get lost under the pile of boys' adventure stories, but they're in there. In the small town of Framley, in Jenny Hans, Clara Lee, and the Apple Pie Dream, elementary school age girls get the chance to be dubbed Little Miss Apple Pie for the Apple Blossom Festival and ride on the parade float if they can give the best speech about what makes their town unique. Clearly has some fears and some insecurities holding her back. She has anxiety about public speaking. She has regrets about hurtful actions taking it against her friends and her little sister. And she's wondering whether being Korean American means that she's truly American enough for apple pie. First chapter books often focus more on humor and adventure plots rather than character development as a hook for budding young readers. But Jenny Han has crafted a memorable and completely relatable character in Clara Lee. She wants to stand out, but she wants to do so in her own way. She makes mistakes, but she ultimately learns from them and is able to be a better sister and daughter and friend to those around her. So next time you're browsing early chapter books, I highly recommend clicking picking up a copy of Clara Lee in the Apple Pie Dream for readers ages 7 and up in addition to the other popular series that dominate the area. John G's selection is Percy Jackson and the Olympians middle grade chapter book series by Rick Riordan, which is hugely popular 
and for good reason. It engages children with the mythologies that our intellectual ancestors used to describe the world, but in a fun and relatable way. Although the focus of the series is on Percy Jackson and his exploits, his friends, Annabeth and Clarice, are two demigods in their own rights, the daughters of Athena and Ares, respectively. And while they do have relationships with other characters throughout the series, the reason for being is to be heroes in their own rights. Protect the weak, fight for what's right, and there is no higher cause. The protagonist of Under the Egg by Laura Marks Fitzgerald is Theo, a 12-year-old girl whose guardian, her grandfather, has just died in a freak accident. Set in modern-day Manhattan, Theo's upbringing has centered around self-reliant, small-scale farming and extreme fiscal conservation. By contrast, a chance meeting leads her to becoming best friends with Bodie, who is wealthy, a technologically inclined millennial, and the daughter of two celebrities. After discovering a potentially valuable portrait under her family's painting of an egg, Theo sees this enigma as her one chance of, to help her mother in addition to preserving her family's home and the only way of life that she has ever known. The strong bonds of friendship, as each girl plays to her very different strengths in solving the mystery of the egg, lead this book to a surprising and very satisfying conclusion. Oh my gosh, how much can I gush about my middle grade pick, Esperanza Rising. Based on the real-life adversities of author Pam Munoz Ryan's grandmother, Esperanza, a 12-year-old daughter of a wealthy rancher in Mexico, is forced to flee north to the United States with her mother and their servants. But on the company farm, the metaphorical river between the two classes dries up. Esperanza faces physical, financial, and emotional hardships of a migratory farmer on a company farm, and she feels that she's losing her connection with the land. The things that keep her tied to herself and to the land are the generations of wisdom from the women around her. So if girl stories tend to get lost in the shuffle of boy stories in middle grade books, you can't throw a wet noodle without hitting a girl story in teen fiction. There is a wealth of options out there in the teen young adult genre, but these are our favorites. Teen section expert and teen press corps leader Tanisha could not tell us fast enough about how much she adores the titular heroines of Marissa Meyer's Lunar Chronicles. The girls of these fractured fairy tales, Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress, all do a bit of saving along the way. These books fly past the Bechdel test because working together is the only way they can defeat the evil Lunar Queen Levana. Last summer, when I was looking for a great new teen series to read, that featured some naturally awesome young women, my best friend steered me towards The Lindbergh Legacy by Sarah Rees Brennan. At the core of this story about long lost sorcerers and murderous magic is one of friendship. While the love triangle between Cammy, Ash, and Jared are what move the plot forward, the friendship between Cammy, Holly, and Angela are what hold the plot together. The boy wizards can fight all they want, but the girls' solidarity will be what hold the resistance together in the face of evil magic. We have books one, unspoken, and two, untold, on our shelves now in the teen section. Kids Inventory Manager Ellen's pick is Etiquette and Espionage, the first in the Finishing School series by Gil Carriger. 14-year-old Safrania is sent to finishing school by her mother in order to turn her from a nature-loving tomboy into a refined lady. But despite their petticoats and their curtsies, the girls at this school learn that the greatest danger the world will ever see might just be them. Yes, girls, you can have it both ways. These are by no means the only books to pass the Bechdel test, but they're the ones that we feel are the exemplars, the ones that pass in the most natural way. And it should be natural. We want children to read books with fully fleshed out characters. Children deserve to read the books where characters that look like them and that don't look like them are represented. The rules are so simple that they can apply to other historically and literarily underrepresented groups. Esperanza Rising and Clarely in the Apple Pie Dream are both stories that not only feature girls, but also non-white protagonists. Diversity in children's literature is so very important, but inclusion shouldn't be presented as a kind of chore. Characters like Esperanza and Clara Lee come from cultural backgrounds that are familiar to some, unfamiliar to others, but regardless of an individual reader's background, the personable stories are what give them the universal appeal. 
Critical thinking is important to develop early in life, and the Bechdel test, whether applied to gender or cultural representation, is a simple exercise that anyone can do to help develop those critical thinking skills. For more information and for more books that pass the Bechdel test, visit our Book Kids department. We're happy to recommend. I want to thank the resourceful and plucky Helen for planning this vlog and for being my guest. As always, thanks for watching from Texas's largest and Austin's number one independent bookstore, Book People. And if you want a concrete example, this video just passed the Bechdel test.